Did you guys talk about uh, Vrabes and Ben Johnson no. in the tunnel? Uh, a little bit. That whole deal. You yeah. saw that, right? Well, Rabes, a little bit. How about Rabes, though? Showing some, showing some range, like if he was an actor. Rabes, obviously, super hard driving, tough guy, detail oriented, and then all of a sudden, emotional, hugging his, his own his own lineman. Are you kidding me? Like, this is awesome. This is really cool for people to see, I think. This is Ohio, too, I think, which is a part of the Ohio lore. Like, I think the genuine emotion and respect that Ohio people have for people that have earned the right to be respected, I think is very real. I think the loyalty is strong. And Vrabel in this right here, I think should be showcased a lot more often about the NFL because it is, anytime somebody retires, they talk about the camaraderie. They talk about the locker room. They talk about the love that they don't get to experience. Games, awesome. Checks, awesome. But they miss everybody that they're around that involves the coaches. And it's shit like that that makes people miss being in the NFL whenever they're forced to retire. And it's shit like that we don't see a lot of, I think. And I, um, that's why he's, he's the reigning coach of the year, that Ohio fuck. Yeah, you know what is. I mean? Like and, that is and Ben Jones, he was thing. super banged up, right? Played yeah, through yeah. crazy, and now he's mm-hmm. played through crazy injuries in the past too, right? That's why he mm-hmm. met him in the tunnel. Never missed. Jeez, I don't think, high school, college. I don't think he's ever. I think I read a report on the internet, so somebody's gonna have to correct me if I'm wrong. No, this is real. Right. I think he's never missed a single game ever in the offensive line. Like that is obviously impressive. An offensive line don't think that is impressive. Okay, they don't. Well, yeah, what are we? Yeah. What are we? Yeah. Well, I'm on the team, we play right? Football. Yeah, yeah, but I assume because we haven't really heard about all of his injuries or what he was going through, right? But for Vrabel to show that, yep. I think it all puts us in perspective because how tough Vrabel is. Yep. It's like, damn, this dude. And there were some moments in the game we saw some highlights of that guy Ben, where he came out after pancaking somebody and like full flex. I'm like, mm-hmm. this guy. Yeah. I don't know what he's going through. He has to be an incredible amount of pain. He seems to be a dog, dog. and dogs are respected in the state of Ohio. I think. Yeah. You know the cool I mean? thing too about Vrabel, like Vrabel is hugging. Him him crying right there at the end of the game i guarantee you monday morning rabes probably was all like killing him in the film session in front of everybody when he felt like he wasn't going 100 percent or he was doing something he didn't want him to do i know you got torn peck or whatever okay i know you got through the game but we can't have this we can't have we can't have you getting out leverage right here in the middle of our fucking play can it like that is yeah but that's a relationship like you would hope a coach and a player has and a lot of people talk about college you know because college you go from young adults to full grown people, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 18 to 22. There's a lot of development. There's a lot of personal care and time that is invested in that particular realm in college football, not from like the head coach, but from like strength coach and position coach and everything like that. So to see it happen in the NFL, I think is fucking good for the game, good for the league and uh, makes me respect, you know, for able even more, which I didn't think was possible. Yeah. It's pretty rare. It's pretty rare. I think for well, that and, to happen. And Ben, obviously. Mm-hmm. And ben. Yeah. Well, ben, I can't, I would love to see like, Obviously, HIPAA, but his medical history, his medical <laughs> reports. Can you imagine all the stuff that dude has battled through? Especially for Raves to meet him right there and do that. And I read, you can read a little bit about what he's fought through, but in Tennessee, like you read anything from there, and every single person there says, like, this guy is God here. Like his name, his number better be in the Ring of Honor when he's done. Like he's one of the most highly respected guys there. Raves told him, I love you like my own. Yeah. You've met, Ra- you, met at least, you met one of Raves' kids. He got big old was- two Ohio kids. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. He has some. I was just. I thought about Tahoe, where that the big Ohio fuck was just walking around the other Ohio fuck, which was Vrabel. And I was like, "What is that?" Like, yeah, that's his kid. Jesus. I think he plays for the Falcons. Does he still? He, he's yeah. Still he, he, he was in camp. There. He yeah. was in camp with them. I know that. I don't know if he's still there or not. Big dude. Big. I love. There's a lot of Vrabel putting over Vrabel right now. Yeah. But honestly. You know, everybody wanted MCDC to be the guy mm-hmm. for like football guys yep. to become head coaches in the NFL. Oh, we got young offensive guru, whiz kids. Uh, we got the super nerd analytic person, this person. We got this person, you know, the football guy coach style, which is just passion and meathead and what? gonna be smart football wise, but the press conference is gonna sound nothing like everybody else and how everybody else was supposed to be. MC DC was supposed to be the guy. Non kneecaps really projected him into that candidacy. <laughs> yep. But I think Vrabel is such a meathead that when he does his press conferences, he does them just so boom that yeah. he didn't he kind of disguised his meatheadness. Yeah. yeah. And he, like, he is the football guy that is having – he's a reigning coach of the year who's a football guy. He's not offense coordinator. He's not defensive coordinator. He is a culture setter. He's a part of the design and the scheme and the strategy. And it's like those are good leaders. If you can find those people, those are – even though they might not be able to, you know, have you throw the ball 55 or 60 times a game and air it out every single time and find holes and zone beaters and everything like that, building a culture is a big fucking deal. And it's like, I think that is what they mean whenever they talk about football people. Like MCDC, we're banking on the culture he was going to set. 
We're banking on a culture he was going to set. Like Detroit is cursed because they didn't pay or they made Calvin Johnson pay him money back. Yep. Detroit mm-hmm. is cursed because they just always have been cursed. It feels like. But MCDC is going to change the culture. Is all we talked about because he's a culture setter. It's like Vrabel is that fucking actual guy. Like Vrabel is the. No offense, MCDC. Maybe someday. Still but Vrabel is like the one. Who, yeah, still building. Obviously, well, yeah. Now Vrabel didn't take that long. But no, no, no. <laughs> Vrabel, Vrabel is that guy. I think that we need to be talking about a little bit more as like the culture. You know, he comes in and flips the culture, yeah. and that's uh, that's a good head coach if you can find a person that can do that. But I don't think there's a lot of variables out there. No, and it felt like that was – he didn't coach under Belichick, but it felt like the press conference thing and, like, the culture thing is what he brought from New England to there because I believe he was with the Chiefs for a little, and then he was Texans at Ohio too. State, yeah, and the Texans. And it feels like that, like, especially the press conference stuff, like he doesn't tell you anything in it. He'll just kind of talk football. And last year, if you remember, they signed that free agent from Houston, the middle linebacker, and they asked him, about it twice and then he said we're not talking about it they asked about him again and he said all right fuck this and just walked off <laughs> yeah so the thing the thing about Vrabel is I have you know because I'm a big fan I assume because he loves AJ that he has seen the show so I have tried to ask him to come on the show before you know yeah and I don't like asking people to come on the show I don't enjoy it I don't think it it's fun. It's why we have next to no guests outside of our guests nowadays because I don't want to hire a booker because I think their job's impossible and we pay a lot of money for it. I don't want to book myself. It's just not it's not a comfortable thing. You you have a chance to get shot down every single day, like by people that it's fun. like you know, but you don't know. It's just not a fun, it's not a fun thing. So Vrabel, I you know, I work up the courage. I'm like, I'm gonna fucking ask this guy to come on the show. You know, I'm gonna fucking do it. I'm gonna do it. So hey, you ever come on a show? I say I don't. He goes, I would suck on your show. I'm not going to say anything, so we'll figure it out. Some <laughs> time. All right. All right. I appreciate it. <laughs> I don't think it's true. I think everything you say is hilarious, but he does have that mentality where he's like, I'm not fucking giving any, up anything to anybody. It, it Like, fuck everybody else. Yeah. That Bustin' with the Boys podcast he did, electrifying. Yep. Mm-hmm. If that dude, when he gets into media, which I hope he does, somebody forces him into it, yeah. whether it's the internet or whatever the fuck he does, I can't wait. I cannot wait for that, AJ. Cannot if, wait. If Braves had, like, if he broke down, if someone put together a clip of, like, 10 plays for him and you just watch Braves break it down and talk about what was going on, maybe just have someone pepper him with little questions. What do you think is going on here with this defense? Well, if Braves was too. Braves and he was, like, and he really gave you his thoughts, it would be some of the most insightful, like, football commentary mixed with some of the best comedy alive. Like, it really would be awesome. I think you would have to talk shit there too, right? I think he's uh, pretty good at that. Pretty uh, solid yeah. at the. I'd uh, say all you gotta do is just rev him up a little bit and let him go. <laughs> it will get you. It will be amazing. Yeah, I, I've heard from everybody that's ever talked to him. Like, hey, whenever, hey, when you talk to Braves now, no, like if you get into it, like, it's come, it's, it's coming back high heat. Like he is, he is a, he's fucking incredible. That's why I can't wait for him to do media. Can't wait for the first time we get to talk to him on camera. And I'm excited that the Titans are doing well, but sorry about it, AFC South. Sam Ellinger playing football uh-huh. for the Colts right now. Yeah, okay. It's a fucking game changer back on track.